Hey Game Show Bay Plant, today I show you how to make wine jerky. So let's go. So I've been wanting to get back to the kitchen, want to start experimenting, making some new things. I realized I haven't made jerky in a while, and heck, I hadn't had jerky in a while, so I thought, what a great excuse to get back in the kitchen and start making some jerky. Uh, today's recipe is a recipe I had for a while and I've been wanting to use and I've been wanting to make wine based jerky. I believe I made a beer based uh, jerky recipe a while back. I want to get into making more uh, alcohol based jerky recipes. If you cook steaks or burgers at all, you know a lot of times uh, alcohol, whether it's beer, wine, hard spirits, or whatever, are used as marinades so it just makes sense to use them in making beef jerky. So uh, real quick today, let me tell you what we're going to need for our wine-based jerky. First, obviously some wine. Uh, I have the Yellowtail Jammy Red Roux. Uh, doesn't say if it's a cab-based blend, a Merlot-based blend. It's just a blend with uh, sweet and vibrant with notes of juicy red berries, vanilla, and chocolate. Um, I'm going to say being Australian, Shiraz could be in the blend. Don't want to go too crazy with the wine. Obviously, if you have the budget, I guess go crazy. Get you a, a silver oak cab from 2017 or something. But just a nice red blend will do. Next, we have uh, some soy sauce, a little garlic salt, a little onion powder, some uh, black pepper. And if you want to spice things up, this is always an option to you. Uh, I've always liked this uh, Cholula Chipotle hot sauce. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in for a kick. Uh, you could always use paprika chili powder or again if you want don't want that kick you could always leave it out uh, as far as the meat uh, the beef I'm using normally in the past I've used ground beef for a lot of these because I have the jerky gun I just like making the strips or whatever but today I'm kind of going a little old school and I'm going to use one pound of thinly sliced bottom round this is something you should be able to find at uh, your grocery store fairly easily so with that being said let's make some wine jerky all right, so one of the first things we want to do uh, with our bottom round before we start the marinade is you want to trim off any pieces of, as the bird will tell you, you want to trim off any pieces of fat. Uh, too much fat uh, like this uh, makes it hard to dehydrate. If we were grilling this or if we are turning this into fajita meat, what have you, we would want that fat for flavor. Uh, but this, unfortunately, keeps... Uh, the beef, the beef from dehydrating and also uh, shortens the shelf life of our jerky. So just get your generic uh, kitchen knife and trim off any little pieces of fat you can. So let me go ahead and knock out all this trimming and then we'll come back to add our marinade. All right, so I've got our one pound of bottom round trimmed. Uh, you'll see there'll be some uh, little fat inner muscle you can't get it all out, but uh, try the best you can to get most of it, uh, just more of the exterior parts. Also, too, I end up cut, cutting it into little smaller strips, just making this, it easier to handle. And more kind of what we're accustomed to when you get those packages of beef jerky in your uh, convenience store. Also, too, I want to add a mistake I made when I was listing ingredients. I forgot one ingredient, and that was uh, brown sugar. All right, so let's go ahead now and create our marinade, add it to the uh, beef. Uh, let's go. Let's get going first with one tablespoon of said brown sugar. All right. Next, we're going to add one quarter cup of our soy sauce. Now, the reason we're using soy is uh, that is a uh, basically our. Uh, where we're getting a bulk of our salt. Salt is great preservative. Remember, jerky is about preserving the meat. So a quarter cup of our soy sauce. Next, one cup of the red wine. Cup, full cup. And a little for yours truly. Oh, that's delightful, yeah. That is nice and kind of jammy, red, plain red fruit. All right, we're going to put that in there. 
done with the liquid ingredients. Next is our onion powder, which we're going to use one teaspoon of our onion powder. One teaspoon of our garlic salt. If you're worried about uh, sodium intake, however, you could substitute garlic powder for garlic salt. I just love the flavor, so. And again, remember, sodium is important as a preservative, so you can't avoid it, but if you want to cut it back, that is an option. And, well, that's about it. And then one teaspoon of black pepper. And then last but not least, just to kick it up a notch, like I'm going to add a few dashes of the Chipotle Cholula. And then we're just going to take, uh, you can use gloves, I've washed my hands, and we're just going to mix this all together. Look, make sure you get all those pieces of uh, meat separated. Make sure we get it in everywhere thoroughly throughout the meat. You want it to soak in. All righty. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and bag this up. You can leave this like in a Ziploc bag or any kind of uh, reusable uh, food storage container. You can leave it overnight, uh, as little as a few hours, 24 hours, much more than that. Uh, you know, the, the, it might uh, be a little too seasoned or the, the, the flavors might come off as a little strong. I'm going to leave this for a few hours. So uh, let me bag this up and we'll come back in a few hours and throw this into our dehydrator. All right, gang, so it's been a few hours. We've let our meat uh, properly marinate. Now it's time uh, to turn on the dehydrator. I've got uh, meat trayed up. Real quick, this particular dehydrator is automatically set for 165 degrees. If you have a dehydrator that has multiple uh, temperature settings, set this for the highest temperature, which is usually around that 165 point. Um, unlike fruits or dehydrating vegetables, uh, temperature is critically important here, so uh, you want the highest setting. If you decide to do this in your oven instead of a dehydrator, you'll want to set it uh, for the lowest setting of your oven. Mine uh, goes down to 170. Depends, some may only go down to 200 or whatever. Uh, but again, the, generally the lowest setting in your oven. Uh, as far as time-wise, we're looking at roughly four hours. I've done enough of these batches and videos for generally around four hours gets the job done. Uh, that's why it's important to thinly slice the meat so you don't have to dehydrate it all day. Kind of saves you a little bit of time. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and turn on our dehydrator. Just by plugging it in. And we'll come back in four hours and see how our jerky came out. All right, so it's been just a shade under four hours and our jerky is uh, ready to go. It dehydrated a little faster than I thought. You'll always want to check up or follow up uh, in the pad. The four hours I use, again, it's just kind of a guideline. Uh, you never want to you know, leave this unattended. You never want to leave the house while you're uh, dehydrating or even using the oven. So you always want to kind of keep an eye on it um, just in case. But our uh, jerky's ready to go. Real quick, let's recap uh, the recipe. It is one tablespoon of brown sugar, one quarter cup of soy sauce, one full cup of red wine, a tablespoon, a teaspoon, I think I back, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and then I added um, a few dashes of uh, Cholula Chipotle sauce. I, I like a little bit of the heat and I like a little bit of the smoke in there. You can, you, you can spice it up however you want or not spice it up at all. That's up to you. Uh, so, with that being said, let's give our jerky a try. I'll take this piece here. That is nice. Um, this is just, in all senses, a more traditional jerky. 
Um, as we're talking about earlier in the video, a lot of times I've used ground beef to do this. And it's just a different texture. Everything to it. Um, but using the classic thinly cut round, <laughs> excuse me, piece around, just the texture is more natural. Uh, a little bit of that chewiness. I think we kind of like, um, but I've got the crisp exterior uh, that's real good. As far as flavor wise goes, again, this is more traditional, kind of a soy base. We've got plenty of that good salty brininess. Um, also pick up just a slight hint of smoke from that Chipotle uh, hot sauce. Um, the wine, I could get, I get a little bit of the, there's a hardiness to a red wine compared to a white wine. I get a little bit of that out of there. Uh, also to the, the dark fruit notes. Um, you know, if you think things like plum water and the classic dark fruits, you just start thinking that spectrum of flavor. This is uh, kind of into that. I really, really like the crisp exterior. That is a nice thin cut of meat. That's something you do want to think about too as far as thickness. Like we all in our mind, nice nice, nice thick steak, a thick burger or whatever. But again for jerky, you know, thin to win. <laughs> they say plain blackjack. Um, overall, just a nice, simple, tasty recipe. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or recipe ideas, please leave them in the comments section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.